Hello, I'm Jim Burris, host of All Things Considered on WABE in Atlanta. Welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. This is the debate among Republican candidates for insurance commissioner. Let's meet the candidates for this debate. They are in alphabetical order. Ben Coward is a qualified candidate for insurance commissioner. He has chosen not to participate and is represented by an empty podium. John King is the incumbent insurance commissioner for the state of Georgia. And Patrick Witt is a businessman and former member of the Trump administration. And now let's meet our panelists. Andy Miller is the Southern Bureau Chief for Kaiser Health News. And Don Montgomery is the Chief Brand Officer with the Atlanta Voice. For complete rules on today's debate, please visit Atlanta Press Club's website. That is atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each candidate will be asked one question by one of the panelists. Candidates have 60 seconds to answer each question. Don Montgomery, you get the first question to Patrick Witt. Thank you so much. Mr. Witt, thank you for being here first and foremost. My question to you is based on your experience, how do you feel as if you're the better qualified candidate for this position? Thank you so much for the question. And let me start by saying thank you to the Atlanta Press Club for having us. This is such a critically important position and oftentimes it gets overlooked. So highlighting this in the debate series, I think is, is very important and I'm grateful for the opportunity to address the crowd tonight. Um, my experience in, in this uh, race is very simple. I served in the Trump administration and I negotiated against health insurance companies, dental insurance, vision insurance, and we achieved the lowest premiums in the past 30 years. I know what it's like to go toe to toe with the insurance companies and deliver results. And that's why I'm grateful to have President Trump's endorsement in this race. I know what it's like to lead an agency in Washington. I had 2,500 people that I was responsible for in a $2.5 billion budget. This is a little bit smaller in the insurance commissioner's office here in Georgia, but I know what it's like to cut budgets and to manage a bureaucracy, and I will bring that experience to Georgia and deliver results for Georgia families. They need someone who takes this uh, position very, very seriously, and unfortunately, we don't have that right now. Uh, Andy Miller, I'll let you ask the next question. Commissioner, as you know, we have some of the highest auto insurance rates in the country. Uh, what have you done in terms of fighting those rate increases, and what do you plan to do if reelected? I completely agree with that. Uh, I tell you, as I travel around Georgia talking to uh, consumers, as I travel around Georgia and talking with consumers, I clearly recognize that this is one of the biggest challenges that Georgia has. My efforts have been, first of all, to understand and to control some of these costs, especially rate increases coming into Georgia. We examine them very carefully. We look at the loss ratio. And so we spend a lot of time dealing with it. And a lot of these uh, requests for uh, premium increases, we reject uh, because they're not found in, in, in absolutely uh, loss ratios. Additionally, we are trying to bring additional comp you know, companies to operate in Georgia to look at, you know, look at competition between insurance companies to bring some of these costs down. And of course, focusing on fraud. Uh, fraud is one of the biggest impacts that we have in Georgia. And so we're going after and uh, prosecuting those who are committing fraud, which is driving all our costs across the board. All right, and that concludes the first round of this debate. The candidates will now ask a question to an opponent of their choice. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask that question, 60 seconds to respond, and the candidate who asked the question will have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. And by random selection, John King, you may ask the first question. Well, Patrick, I've, sp I've spent my entire career uh, in public service, not only almost uh, four decades as a law enforcement officer, as a military officer. And of course, I've spent a lot of time, you know, a lot of time serving the community here in Georgia. And I know that when things get tough, you know, you don't quit. Uh, by looking at your resume, I've recognized that you jumped, uh, you know, from one race to the other. If elected, how will voters know they're not just, you're just chasing another shiny object? Well, thank you for the question. Look, uh, if you also look at my resume and you look at my background, you see that I have success every single uh, place that I go and in everything that I do. Uh, Mr. King, you talked about your service, and let me be the first one to say thank you so much for your service in law enforcement and also in the Georgia National Guard. I have a brother who's currently serving on active duty right now down at Eglin Air Force Base. Hey, Jeff, uh, Joni, Kirby, and Gracie, his kids, and, and Courtney, his wife. Uh, I know what a commitment that can be and how difficult it is to balance all of that. But one of the things that uh, the reason why I'm really in this race is because 
unfortunately, you're not doing the proper balance between that Georgia National Guard job and the commitments of this office. You put your hand up and you swore an oath when you took this office, and unfortunately, you're not living up to uh, that oath right now. And that's not coming from your political opponent. That's coming from people within your own office and within the insurance industry and also the firefighter community who say that the first question they always ask me when I show up is, who is our current insurance commissioner? Because right now you're not showing up to work. I think uh, I've been told it's about two to three times a month that you actually uh, grace the office with your presence. And unfortunately, right. that's not right. All right. That's time on that. And Mr. King, you do get a 30 second rebuttal. Thank you so much. Uh, clearly, you know, you don't you don't run this office from uh, Atlanta. This is not the Atlanta insurance commissioner. This is the state of Georgia commissioners. And I travel around the state. I'm listening to firefighters, fire chiefs and insurance uh, and the insurance community and also following up on, on uh, when we have weather events. I've been there on the ground doing my job, protecting Georgia consumers from the ground, not from the auspices from Atlanta. Patrick Witt, it's your turn to ask the next question. Thank you. Mr. King, you recently joined Stacey Abrams in support of a bill that would have mandated insurance companies to cover and force Georgians to pay for gender reassignment surgeries and hormone blockers for children. At a time when USA Today's Woman of the Year is a biological male, men are competing in women's sports, and inflation is crushing American families, how could you possibly have supported such legislation? Were you simply ignorant as to what was in the bill, or do you actively support gender reassignment surgeries for children? Well, that is absolutely silly. You know, I am a combat veteran. I am a police officer. I realized that this state of Georgia has neglected investing in mental health. And so I supported this bill, a unanimous bill across the state, across parties, because we, Georgia desperately needed for a state to pay paying attention to the folks that desperately need. And my job is to have insurance companies treat mental health, addiction health, just like any other disease. And that's what we're doing. And I'm very proud to support that that bill, the fact that every member of the legislature and our governor has supported it without any party uh, association. So I'm very proud of the f fact. I have no idea what you're talking about, you know, you know, the gender reassignment. That, that is just nonsense. I have focused completely on combat veterans and folks living on our streets that desperately need the help of insurance companies. Patrick Witt, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, so unfortunately, what you just said is true. You have no idea what I'm talking about because you didn't know what was in that bill. Uh, what you just heard is an outright lie. Mr. King supported that bill. He was a vocal proponent in its original form. And HB 1013 would have handed over the health insurance markets in Georgia to the World Health Organization and mandated forced Georgians to pay for objectionable procedures like gender reassignment surgeries and hormone blockers for kids. And he expressed no uh, concerns with that legislation at all. Obviously, tonight we find out it's because he was ignorant as to what was in the bill. Uh, Georgians need somebody in this office who understands legislation that will affect insurance markets and stand firm against them. I Thank would you. never allow then, a bill that, like that to go into effect. Thank you. That is our time. I would like to give you 30 more seconds, though, to respond if you care to, Mr. King. Yes. You know, clearly, this is the talking points have been just, you know, driven by the, the folks that do, ha, absolutely do not understand. I supported the bill. I participated in building this bill for this pa final passage. I recognize that clearly bills get worked out. And uh, I appreciate the fact that we're helping combat veterans and f those folks who are homeless and living in the streets that desperately need that help. That concludes our second round. For those just joining us, this is the debate between Republican candidates for state insurance commissioner. And we now go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidate of their choice. That is, until we run out of time. As a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask a question of the candidates. I will also determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. Don Montgomery, you get the first question in this round. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Witt, for your last question to the candidate. Um, I have a question directed to you. Um, regarding the Mental Health Parity Act, how, do you, how did you really feel about that as a Georgian or as a candidate running for this position overall? I know you've kind of expressed some concerns just a few moments ago, but kind of speak to the audience and kind of explain why you would be, why you were against that. Yeah, so I understand that we have issues in this country, and it's not only in Georgia, it's all across the U.S. Uh, with mental health. And I fully support helping people and finding creative ways to, to provide services to them. But 
legislation uh, has issues and you need to be able to read through those bills and see all of the issues there. And if you can't, uh, you know, be bothered to show up to work, but two to three times a month, and then suddenly you're activated to support legislation that would force Georgians to violate their conscience, potentially violate their First Amendment rights to subsidize gender reassignment surgeries and hormone blockers for kids is absolutely amazing to me. And again, you know, I thank the general for his service. I think uh, what you're doing is great, but this is very clearly not your top priority. And again, that's not coming from his political opponent. That is coming from industry leaders. That is coming from people within his own office that say, we're so grateful you got in this race because right now we have an absentee insurance commissioner who can't be bothered to show up to work. Mr. King, I'd like to give you 30 seconds to respond. Well, thank you. You know, it's very clear that, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Witt has no idea what he's talking about. I, if you've seen where I've been, I've been traveling all over the state. I've been talking to the folks who have been neglected for many, many, for many years. I mean, there's been a, a tradition of, of folks who just had no business serving in the state of Georgia. I have started my career serving the streets of Atlanta as an Atlanta policeman, as a soldier. I have four decades of service. I have a proven track record, track record and I'll be happy to uh, put that uh, for the voters uh, to examine. All right. Thank you. Andy Miller, you may now ask a question to the candidate of your choice. Mr. Witt, you were part of an administration, the Trump administration, that vigorously opposed the Affordable Care Act and wanted to repeal it. Is that still your position, to repeal Obamacare? And if so, what would you put in its place? So I support any legislation that drives down cost and increases competition in the market. The issue with Obamacare was that it was a government takeover of health care, similar to the one that uh, Mr. King pushed with HB 1013. The answer, as conservatives, we know, is always in less government regulation and allowing free market competition to drive down cost. I do want to return to one thing that uh, Mr. King said just a moment ago, uh, you know, that he's actively traveling around the state and engaging with people. Um, I don't know if uh, Mr. King has met a rate increase that he doesn't like. His predecessor, the gentleman that's currently, unfortunately, uh, serving a seven-year sentence right now for impropriety, uh, put up on the website all of the rates in the state of Georgia. And when I reached out to folks and I said, what are the current rates here in Georgia for the different products and policies out there? They're no longer there. Do you know why? Because Mr. King fought to take those down and decrease transparency, further driving up cost in this state. When I'm commissioner, we will bring that back. We will be transparent. We will have all the rates on the website so people can shop and ultimately drive down costs through competition and shopping. All right. Thank you. And uh, Mr. King, you have 30 seconds to rebut. Thank you so much. You know, that is just factually incorrect. And we have been Are they very on the website? Uh, we've been very focused. You know, we changed this website. The website hadn't been... Please go look. Uh, Mr. Witt, viewers. please allow Mr. King to... Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, we focus completely on trying to bring transparency. I took over an agency that was absolutely void of ethics. I've worked day in and day out to try to bring integrity and, and transparency to this office. We had to redesign the whole website, and we're still making, every day we're making improvements to that office. And I'm very proud of the fact that we're bringing additional companies to operate to Georgia to drive, through competition, to drive the lower rates. I'd like to follow up with a question for Mr. Witt. Uh, you mentioned free market competition. Uh, Georgia opened the borders to other states to allow insurance to be sold from other states in the state of Georgia. And the belief was that by doing this, it would spur competition and lower rates. That didn't happen. Why would your idea be different this time? Well, I think that goes back to what I mentioned just a moment ago. That requires driving down rates to have an insurance commissioner that shows up to work. And unfortunately, when you have an insurance commissioner who is completely absentee, then yeah, those rate increases go by and he doesn't even notice that they're, they're going through. He's delegated all of that authority down and they have rubber stamped every single increase by large insurance companies. Um, as insurance commissioner, I will be fully engaged. I will look at every single rate increase that the commissioner has approved in his tenure, and we will take a fine-tooth comb to that and see if those rate increases were actually justified or, as I suspect, they were not justified and they are insurance companies taking advantage of Georgians. So as insurance commissioner, I promise to be engaged. I promise to be committed. This will be my primary focus. I won't be doing any other jobs. I won't be collecting three paychecks from different entities. This will be my focus. You have my promise. John King, 30 seconds. Thank you so much. You know, we are working really hard every day, examining every one of these rates that come through. And clearly the loss ratio is there. One of the challenges that we have is we have to travel outside of Atlanta. 
and to hear consumers and their complaints and their perils that they're dealing with. You can't just, people are not going to come to Atlanta to kiss the ring in your, in your office. This, I know the federal government likes to operate that way, but we don't do that in Georgia. You have to travel and listen to consumers, and that is what I've dedicated myself to doing. Thank you. Don Montgomery, your thank, turn. Thank you so much. This question is to you, Commissioner. Um, the Atlanta Voice reported on when you served Blue Cross Blue Shield with a $5 million fine. We, we shared that story, and we heard a lot of feedback from a lot of our audience where they were a little bit confused as to how you came to serving that fine and what was going on. But the biggest upside on that was that they felt like they were being heard in some cases. So can you just kind of speak briefly on how you came to that decision and why Georgians should continue to trust you. Thank you so much. One of the, one of the things that I have done as I travel around, around Georgia is listening to consumers. Number one complaint from insurance, you know, from consumers across our state is how they were being treated unfairly. Insurance commissioners in the past have looked the other way. I'm very proud that we've held the largest insurance carrier in Georgia with the largest fine that this state has ever issued. And and I am very proud of what we've done, and we're, we're looking at all the insurance companies because we're not going to let anybody to continue treating Georgia consumers in the way that these insurance companies have, have treated uh, insurance consumers in the past. Andy Miller, it's your turn to ask a question. Commissioner, as you know, health insurance generates a lot of complaints. How do, how do you make this data available to consumers in the sense that they want to know who are the bad actors among the insurance companies? Well, thank you very much. You know, that, that question, that is what 1013, the, act, the actual responsibilities of what this bill does and requires for the insurance commissioner to provide is to publish once a year the performance of insurance companies when it comes to health, to uh, mental health parity. And so that's one of the requirements. And working with the other forms of, of uh, the other parts of our government to deliver true mental health uh, services to Georgia consumers. So I'm proud of the fact that we work hard on this, that we remove a lot of the nonsense language, but they, it gets worked out all the time on, you know, when you're working with the, you know, legislation. But the key is, is getting outside the office, talking to consumers and being, and being sensitive to, to the pressures that are going all across Georgia. The pressures here in Atlanta are totally different than they are in, in, you know, in, in on the coast than they are in middle Georgia. And you're not going to find that out unless you get out of the office and talk to folks being affected by, by the authority of this, this uh, office. I don't know if I just have one rebuttal on that. Uh, we mentioned the $5 billion fine that was levied, or $5 million fine that was levied recently against uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, Commissioner, do you know how much the annual revenue is of Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield? I do. It's $137 billion. They're not even going to notice that fine. And you know what else? That investigation was opened under your predecessor, Jim Beck four years ago and you sat on it for three and a half years until guess what i got in the race and then three weeks later you levy a five million dollar show fine there have been no other market conduct investigations under his office i promise you i will go after those insurance companies and i thank will you. make sure that georgians are being protected commissioner king you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal thank you so much you know insurance commissioners in the past have looked at their at their authority as to conduct conduct market reviews and this is something that's very important uh, I've worked very closely. First of all, we, we had a pandemic. And so the availability of many of these records, insurance commissioners in the past have looked the other way. They have not really done anything. I am the first insurance commissioner that's truly held in health insurance companies accountable. And we continue to look hard at every company. No, no company is exempt. And so we're looking hard and holding people accountable. But I can't wreck the industry in the process because we all suffer as a result of that. Uh, Mr. Witt, what would be an appropriate fine in this case? Hmm. Well, I'd have to look into the facts, and this is not just for Blue Cross Blue Shield. This is all the insurance companies, especially health insurance companies. Insurance companies are taking advantage of Georgians right now, and they know that there's going to be no insurance commissioner currently in the office who will stop them. They're canceling people's policies when they file claims. They're paying out less than 100 percent of claims, and they're outright denying other claims blanket statement-wise uh, without actually looking into the facts. These deceptive, bad-faith practices will end when I am insurance commissioner. I will not just be a rubber stamp for the insurance companies. I'm proud to say that I've accepted exactly zero dollars from insurance companies in this race. I'm not owned by them. I can't say the same thing for my opponent. I have to give you a 30-second rebuttal. Thank for you so much. Sure. You know, clearly, uh, if, 
you know, Mr. Witt, if you understood the law, I can't take money from insurance companies. It is a clear fact. It's just trying to throw some oil out there on the fire to see what happens. And so it's, it's nonsense. Yes, I am very proud of the support that we've gotten across the state. You know, people recognize that we've got this agency back on its tracks, that we got an integrity back into this office. And people are glad, and they're willing to support my race. I'm not jumping from one race to the other because I, I didn't get any traction. He did mention my name. I just want to rebut that really quickly. You mentioned that you don't accept any money from insurance companies. Go to Mr. King's disclosures, and you will see at least $60,000 of donations from a company called Centene Corporation, which he approved a merger between the, uh, Centene and another company, which drove down competition into the market and increased uh, insurance costs for Georgians. So I, that's I, we're going to have to stop there with that. Said, and, right? and I do have to give you a few seconds to respond to that, uh, Mr. King. Thank you very much. Sure. You know, the law is very clear. I cannot take money from insurance. Do you company. deny that you took $60,000 know, from Centene? We're, we're going to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Montgomery, it is your turn to ask a question. Yes, so my question is to Mr. Witt. Um, you've shared your experience. You've shared that you worked in Trump administration. Can you kind of explain specifically what, you, what your role was and why you feel as if you are who Georgia needs as an insurance commissioner? Yeah, so I proudly left my job in the private sector to go serve in the Trump administration and to fight for the America First agenda. I served as deputy chief and then acting chief of staff of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. And the easiest way to understand my role was when President Trump would get up there and talk about draining the swamp, I was leading the implementation of executive orders and policies to do just that. I also proudly led the implementation of the executive order to eliminate critical race theory from our federal agencies. That's actually something that Mr. King uh, pushed forward when he was Doraville police chief, was including diversity, equity, and inclusion in his police department. Uh, one of my other responsibilities, as I mentioned at the onset, is I handled all the negotiation for insurance uh, for 2.2 million federal workers, retirees, and their families, about 9 million Americans in total, and we achieved the lowest premiums in the past 30 years. That kind of experience is not matched in this race, certainly not by our current commissioner, who can't be bothered to show up to work. Mr. King, you have the last word in this round. Thank you so much. You know, I'm very proud of my service, not only with the City of Atlanta Police Department, but also with the Doraville Pol Police Department. You know, this whole idea of, of critical race theory in the Doraville, my job was to protect the residents of the city of Doraville. My job today is to protect the citizens of the state of Georgia against abuses from insurance companies. And my record is clear. You know, a lot of there's some great talking points that Mr. Witt has pulled, you know, come out with. Thank you. And these are great, but they're nonsense. They're absolute fiction. And you know what? I, I stand on my record. The whole idea of going and not protecting my community, this is how I drive you know, this agency, is to protect insurance com you know, consumers across our state. And that is all the time we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Patrick Witt, you get the first closing statement. Thank you very much. While I may not grab the headlines that a Senate or governor race does, the Georgia Insurance Commissioner Office is a critically important position in this state and a potential force for good. But that force for good only exists if you have an insurance commissioner who is actually interested in doing the job. Now, when you go vote on May 24th, the ballot will tell you that there's an incumbent in this position. But I'm sad to say the reality is the Georgia Insurance Commissioner's Office is vacant. Mr. King claims that he travels around the state. Well, it's like he's playing Battleship and missing every single time because I have not come across a single person in my travels around the state who knows who he is. Georgians need someone who will show up to work. And if I showed up as infrequently as Mr. King did, I'd be fired. And that's exactly what I'm asking Georgians to do on May 24th. I'm asking you to fire your current absentee insurance commissioner and hire me instead. I'm proudly the only insurance commissioner candidate, not only in this race, but in the entire country endorsed by President Trump. I'll fight to lower your cost. I'll fight against woke insurance mandates, and I'll fight for Georgia families like they were my own. I'm Patrick Witt. I'd be grateful to have your vote on May 24th. That Thank is you. time. John King, you get the final closing statement. Thank you. You know, elections are about choices, and there's a clear one here to make. I'm not a politician. I'm not a, bu a bureaucrat. You know, I'm a lawman. I'm a, I'm a public servant. I've been a soldier. You know, I got appointed to take over this agency to clear out corruption and to get this agency back on its tracks. And that's exactly what I've done. You know, we've worked hard to get this agency to be responsive to Georgia consumers. 
and to control the health costs of our state. You know, I cracked down on corruption. I cracked down on, on uh, insurance fraud. And I stood up to the defund the police movement, pushed for uh, strong border policies. And I called out the administration with, the, with this horrible withdrawal from Afghanistan that it cost so many lives. You know, but, our, but most importantly, I am, I'm worked around the clock to put Georgia consumers first and to make sure that we control the special interests. I'm asking you to vote and stop the radical left and help us protect Georgia consumers. Thank you very much. God bless you. And that concludes our debate. We would like to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, May the 24th. Early voting is now underway. Our thanks to the candidates, John King, Patrick Witt. Absent today was Ben Coward. We'd also like to thank our panel of journalists, Andy Miller and Don Montgomery. We'd finally like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. For more information on the debates that they're going to host this election season, just head to atlantapressclub.org. I'm Jim Burris. Thanks for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series.